Hey cool worlders, it's David. So today I'm gonna to try and calculate how many planets are there in the universe. This is a follow on from part one where we calculated how many planets there were in our home galaxy, the Milky Way. So if you haven't seen that video, you might wanna check that out first before you get that. The link is down below in the description. By the way, if the setup looks a bit different today, it is, I've tried changing the rig around. So anyway, let me know in the comments below if you like this setup or not. To recap from the last video, we ended up with a conservative estimate of 200 billion planets in our home galaxy, which is an average of about one planet per star. On the other hand, our optimistic estimate ended up with 1.2 trillion planets in our Milky Way, or an average of six planets per star. In the comments of that video, Saloom84Blue, I hope I'm saying that right, pointed out that actually we hadn't even accounted for moons, and some moons are planet sized, so the number's probably even bigger. But for the sake of this video, let's just focus on planets. So since we've essentially estimated how many planets there are on average per star, Really, all we need to do is estimate how many stars there are in the entire universe, and then we can just sort of multiply those two numbers together. Now, since we roughly know how many stars there are in our home galaxy, the Milky Way, you might think all you need to do is take the numbers from the last video and multiply them by the total number of galaxies in the universe. So you'd stare at one patch of the sky for long enough so that you could see even the most distant, small galaxies. You'd count up the total number there, and then you just multiply by how many of those patches of sky would fit in the entire sky. So somebody's actually done that, and after you account for missed galaxies due to telescope limitations, you end up with about two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. The problem is though that galaxies, much like people, come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. You have small dwarf galaxies like GNZ11, which is actually the oldest galaxy ever photographed, up to monstrous, overgrown ones like IC1101, which contains some 100 trillion stars. So this simple multiplying idea is not gonna work out. So a better way to calculate the total number of stars in the observable universe is actually to go back to that original patch of the sky image. But now, instead of just merely counting the total number of galaxies, take each galaxy and estimate the number of stars within each based off the luminosity, the brightness of the galaxy itself. When you do this, you get an estimate of 70 sextillion, not very often you get to say sextillion, stars in our observable universe. But that is definitely a lowball estimate because this calculation no longer accounts for missed galaxies that you can't see. So are we done? Or well, not yet, because I actually promised you guys the total number of planets in the universe not the observable universe, and they are different. When we look at an image of the most distant galaxies we can see, some of the light left those galaxies over 13 billion years ago. That's only shortly after the Big Bang itself. Now, if that galaxy were much further away, there wouldn't have been enough time yet in the universe for the light to have reached us. Now, you might think that nothing could possibly be further away than this distance because, you know, presumably nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. But actually, you'd be wrong. Space itself can and does expand faster than the speed of light. Within Einstein's theory of relativity, it only prohibits particles traveling in space to go faster than the speed of light. Space itself can move faster than the speed of light. Therefore, those distant galaxies that we see do not represent the edge of the universe. They only represent the observable boundary. Because of the expansion of the universe, light which left a source 13.8 billion years ago, which is the age of the universe, is not actually 13.8 billion light years away from us. It's actually much greater than that because of all this expansion. Accounting for this gives you an observable universe which is a whopping 93 billion light years across. But again, just because we can't see beyond that distance doesn't mean there's nothing beyond it. That's kind of like the logic of a toddler playing hide and seek. By measuring the curvature of space using the leftover radiation from the Big Bang called the cosmic microwave background radiation, one can actually constrain that the full universe beyond the observable edge must be at least 274 billion light years across to 99% confidence. In fact, the universe may very well be infinite as far as we can tell right now, but its minimum is that size. So using the optimistic planet rate from the last video, multiplied by the number of stars in the observable universe, multiplied again by the increased volume of the full universe, gets us 10 septillion planets altogether. 
That's 10 million billion billion planets, or a one with 25 zeros after it. It's difficult to contextualize such a monstrous number. For example, it's a million times greater than the number of grains of sand on all of the beaches in the world. It's 20 million times greater than the number of seconds which have transpired since the Big Bang. It's 100,000 times greater than the number of heartbeats every human who has ever lived has ever had. To quote the late great Carl Sagan, the size and age of the cosmos are beyond ordinary human understanding. Lost somewhere between immensity and eternity is our tiny planetary home. Thank you so much for watching these videos, everybody. If you want to get more videos like this and you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button below and please do like and share this video. It certainly helps us out. So until next time, stay thoughtful and stay curious.